beautiful people, what's up? My name is Mark and I love making things sweet and in style. If you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And this is where I do anything and everything creative. So for today, I'm going to share with you all my different tools that I use in flower making and my different suppliers as well. And I'll be answering all the questions that you actually sent me on Messenger and also on my Instagram account. Okay, so the very, very first thing that you need if you're making flowers is, of course, yourself and your positivity, okay? Kidding aside, what you need first is a table. You need a sturdy table where you can actually knead and roll your paste, okay? If you don't have a table that's very smooth and sturdy, you need to use a silicone mat, okay? It's something like this so that it won't stick the paste, okay? It won't stick on the table. If you don't have a silicone mat, you can use uh, the green board like so, okay? Um, this is the one commonly used for architecture or for cutting materials, but you can also use that in sugar flowers. It works perfectly. If you don't have that, you can also use the back part of the cell board, okay? Cell board actually has two sides, one that is very smooth and the other one that actually have grooves or lines in between. So this is what you use if you find it hard to insert wires on flowers that are very, very thin, okay? So another material that you can use is a rolling pin. So there are different kinds of rolling pin that you can use. So I'm gonna show you here the one that I use all the time because I love the texture, it's very smooth. So this is a plastic rolling pin or acrylic. So I bought this at Bake at Al. So Bernice Chua of Party Carousel also has this. Okay, and this is also available at Baker's Bazaar, so you can check them out. If you don't have access to this, you can use the old um, and very first rolling pin, I think. This is made with wood. It's very smooth and it lasts a long time also. If ever you can find any of these two, you can actually use a PVC pipe, okay? Just make sure that if you're using a PVC pipe, you use the one that is specifically for water okay because the one for electrical has VOC content it's not food safe this is not food safe also but this is not toxic okay so you can use this if you're practicing and just starting or for cold porcelain you can use this one so another thing that I use is a flower drying kit okay so I have here my DIY um, kit where I dry my flowers so basically this is just an ordinary plastic lid where I placed a styro ball that is 2.5 inches, I cut in half. I glued using the hot glue, okay? So if ever you can't make this one, there's actually available on the market. It's called a flower drying foam, okay? So it looks like this one. See that? It comes in different sizes, so it comes in different colors also. You can use this one where you can dry your petals safely. And the good thing about this is you can actually wash it, so it's a very hygienic. So I'm going to show you, there's actually another one that is very small. This is what it looks like. I bought this at uh, Bake at Al, uh, but Baker's Bazaar, I think they also have this one, so you can check it out. And then, um, since you're working with flower paste or gum paste, you always need to have a container where you put the paste or the petals that are cut so it won't dry out. So what I use is this ordinary Tupperware so that you can buy at markets, okay? So you see there's a lot of gum paste. If you can't access this one, an alternative is a Ziploc. You can also use a Ziploc, okay? If you don't have a Ziploc and if you want to invest on things that, are, that will last long, okay? This is a blue flap. See that? This is from Wilton. I bought this from Bake at Al, but I think it's also available in malls. In the baking area so what I love about this one is aside from you can put your petals inside so it won't dry out you can actually thin out petals here like that one okay even using your fingers you can thin out petals if you don't have this an alternative is an acetate so two pieces of acetate you put them together as if you're just like this okay so you can put the paste inside or you can also use an old calendar that has a flip. Make sure to clean it, okay? You can also use, um, what do you call this? The plastic folder that's transparent. You can also use that one. Okay, so 
We're done with some of the basic materials, so for now, I'll be answering some of the questions that you actually sent me on Messenger. So I have them all here. Okay, so we're gonna shake that. So this is just for fun. Okay, so I'll be taking the first question. <laughs> okay, this is really funny. So the first question is, um, how many partners have you had? So, yeah. Um, I basically had three, so... All of them lasted very well but you know if you don't work out together you're not really meant for each other and maybe you, you're just good as friends okay so pick another question okay, so we have another question here okay what makes me mad okay what makes you mad if things are not organized well it makes me a bit mad and then if my plants are destroyed or or let's say my flowers the ones that i created if accidentally you destroyed them um it kind of irritates me okay um because my patience is actually very long so i can tolerate a lot of different issues but if you um destroy my flowers or my plants that are living i'm really gonna get mad at you <laughs> okay Okay, um, the question is how to overcome criticism. Uh, basically for me, for you to overcome criticism, first you need to accept it within yourself. And then once you accepted it, you need to let go of that negative vibe, okay? Don't let it sink in and stay in you because it's only going to affect you as a person. It's going to affect your work. It's going to affect your mood on how you deal with people, okay? So Okay, this is really, really funny, okay? Um, I don't know what got into you guys for asking me this question. This is actually a little bit of torture, you know? This is torturing me. The question was, Ano ka ba? Uh, top or bottom? Okay. Um, please be specific. So, I don't know what you're talking about. Is it the top or bottom of a cake or whatsoever? I don't know. So please be specific next time, okay? <laughs> what makes me happy? Um, basically, flowers and plants makes me happy. Um, for those of you who are actually my close friends, you would know that when I see a lot of plants, especially at a plant market, I'm like a kid who is in a candy shop, okay? So I can't contain myself if there's so many plants. Uh, the second thing is arts. So, if you took me on a date, let's say you bring me on art exhibits, I would really, really, really appreciate that, okay? And then, uh, going back to the materials that I use, of course, if you're making flowers, you need to put them on something or you need to cling them on something like wires, okay? So, there are different types of wire. I'm going to put all the gauges and the number on the description box below, so I suggest you check it out, okay? So I'm gonna show you. So these are just some of the wires that I use. Normally I have a lot of stock of number 28. Okay, number 28 color white. So this one is available at Bake It All. Bernice Chua also has this so you can order from her. And then the green, uh, this is 22. And then this one, this is one of my favorite. Okay, it's very long and it's very thick. This is wire number 23. I got this from Bake It All. They have a lot of this, okay? And to give you an idea of the price point, okay. okay, it doesn't have a price anymore, but it's not that expensive. Knowing that it's a lot and it's very long, you can use this in a lot of projects, okay? And then the next one that I always use is, of course, cutters. So, this is what I use. See that? Okay. Um, I always love steel cutters, but you can also use one that are plastic. This is from Wilton, the green one. So um, I have a friend who is a supplier of different cutters, so you can go check his store. So I'm gonna put it on the description box below also. And then aside from cutters, you also use uh, ordinary foam, okay? So if you want to copy your petals, this is where I do it. So for you to copy your petals on an ordinary foam, what you need is a ball tool, okay? So here are the ball tools. There are different sizes, so I highly suggest you invest on the metal, okay? This is metal and stainless. 
because if you use the plastic one sometimes if you apply too much pressure it's gonna knock off okay and you don't want that to happen so you need to invest in something that's metal so I bought this from Bake It Al. It's also available at Bernie's Chua and Baker's Bazaar, so you can check them out. So, you see there are different sizes. So, the smaller the ball tool, the more ruffles you can create. So, the bigger the ball tool, the bigger the waves and ruffles that you can create. And also, you use the bigger one for cleaning out petals, okay? And then, aside from the ball tool, you can actually use uh, different sculpting tools. So normally this is uh, tagged as fondant, sculpting tools, or so. So this is what it looks like. See that? There's a lot of different brands out there. I suggest you go on for the one that's really, that's really, really, okay? I don't know what's really is. Sorry about that. Um, that's really sturdy, like this one. Because sometimes if you use ones that are very cheap, when you use it, it's going to knock off. So sometimes it's... It breaks in the middle, okay? So you don't want that. So this, and then for cutting my wires, flowered wire cutter. So this is from Japan. Um, you can also buy this at Bake It Al. Okay, so no matter how thick the wire, you can cut it with this one smoothly because it has little, you see that? Okay, this, it has those little um, teeth like. So it's very sharp. So be careful when you're using this. You can also use the the blade from the long nose but the pliers uh, specifically the long nose pliers i use this for um, folding my wires okay or when i'm inserting them on cake so you have to invest on this one and then what i have here also is floral tape so it comes in different color green white and brown so uh, most of the time you use the color green okay so you always need to expand to activate the stickiness okay because if you don't expand the glue won't come out and it's not gonna help at all okay so always have to expand floral tape when you're using it and then uh, the next thing that I have here is ordinary spray bottles okay this is actually an alternative to airbrush okay so if you don't have an airbrush you can use this one so you see I have different so basically, I mix in gin or vodka and then a little bit of color. Okay. You can also use that one. And then I have another thing that I use in most of my flowers. You're very familiar with this one. This is a barbecue stick or a barbecue skewer. So if you don't have veiners, you can use this one. I also use this in making holes and making details. Okay. And then I also have this um, tweezers. Okay. So... If you want to work on very fine, small details, I use this one. This is very important. Okay, and then I also have scissor, different sets of scissor. This is the small one I use for flower buds, okay? You can also use uh, the finer one. And then, um, now we'll be answering some questions again. I'm shaking this. What do you use to crumb coat your cakes? Okay. Um, that's a very good question. Finally, something that's related to cakes. Okay, um, what I use to crumb coat my cakes is basically um, buttercream, okay? I have my own recipe for buttercream, but sometimes if I don't use buttercream, I usually go directly to ganache. So, it's either a pure ganache or whipped ganache because sometimes I find it easier if I use a whipped ganache. So... I'm actually planning to do a video on that, so comment down below if you're interested and let me know. Okay, we'll be shaking some more. <laughs> okay, wh why, why are you asking me questions like this? My God. Okay, so since I'm very honest, I'm gonna answer it anyway. So the question is, are you virgin? Of course, no. I had several partners, but my heart is very, very big. Okay, and my heart is very pure also my body so yeah I'm not I answered it okay so next one <laughs> okay why is it that most of the questions are related to my relationships okay okay um the question is why did I broke up with my ex hmm um basically we didn't work out okay so you know you can't push things that are not meant for each other because uh, sometimes you're really meant as friends okay if you're just um, 
let's say God planned you, both of you to be friends, so you'll really end up as friends, okay? So if it doesn't work out or let's say there are some problems along the way, um, the best thing that you can do is to wish all the best for the other person. Okay, I don't know. The question is really funny, but yeah, um, we didn't work out and we respect each other. So yeah, that's good. So last question for this round. <laughs> okay, another funny question. Okay, so... Okay, the question was... Why boyfriend sayang ka? Pwede ako. <laughs> okay, so... Um, with regards to that, we all have different preferences and I respect yours and I respect mine as well. So it's a matter of preference. So... I just don't see myself as ending up with someone who is, you know, female or like that. So, yeah, it depends on your preference. So, as long as you're not something, as long as you're not doing something that's very wrong, it's okay. And as long as you're contributing to the society, that's good. Okay. Then, okay. This is really, really nice. Um. Of all the details on making cakes, why flowers? Okay, basically, um, flowers has a very long time connection with me. So since I was young, I was really attracted to flowers. To give you an idea, when I was younger, instead of me playing with my toys, I actually would urge my mom to take me to the plant store, okay, to buy some plants. And then when I was in kindergarten, I remember when my teacher asked me what I wanted as a gift, Instead of asking for a toy, what I asked is a plant. Yes, yeah, so I remember the first plant that I had that was uh, Monstera. So it's still alive until now. So it's really big and I actually produce a lot of other baby Monsteras from that one. Okay, and then going back to our tools that I use for flower making. So I also use threads, ordinary thread. I use ordinary threads like this or cotton threads, specifically cotton threads. And um, this is what I use for making flower centers. Okay, see that? And the yellow ones, that is actually gelatin. So I'm going to show you. I have a lot of small containers like this. It will also help if you're making flowers. So what I do, I mix in ordinary gelatin just like this. So the brand that I'm using is Ferna. You need to use gelatin powder, okay? So you mix in a little bit of gelatin and petal dust. And then you can actually create different colors. So this will act as pollens, okay? So if you're making, uh, let's say that amaryllis flowers at the back. So the pollens, the brown pollens, this is what I use. Ordinary gelatin. So normally it's yellowish like this. You need to add petal dust in order to change the color and shake it, okay? It's really important and then by the way if you don't have a flower former or let's say the DIY kit that I showed you you can actually use plastic spoons or if you're a little bit rich you can use a uh, silver or metal spoons okay just like so so in some of my video tutorials you've seen me using this for drying my petals for them to retain the shape so this is actually very helpful. And then um, what I also have here is the, these are styro balls. So you can use this for flower centers such as um, roses, ranunculus. Oh, by the way, if you wanted to learn how to make a ranunculus, so please comment down below. I'll be happy to make a video on that one. Okay. This one, uh, usually I buy this at Bake It Al. So it's a lot. You can also buy this from Bernice Chua or Baker's Bazaar. So they have a lot of stuff. And then, um, of course, this is the flower veiners. Okay. So for you to get the very detailed texture, you need to use this one. So for the veiners, you can actually get this from Bake It Al. But if you want a very uh, different kinds of veiners, you can actually check out the store of Emmanuel Belan. Uh, it's gonna be on the description box below. I suggest you check it out. He also sells different cutters that are very, very high quality and it's very good to use. And then uh, for dusting my flowers, what I use is different makeup brushes. 
Can you see that? I'm very OC when it comes to my brushes. So I only use a specific color for specific brushes, okay? Let's say I'm using, uh, I'm dusting a big flower using red dust. This is what I use, okay? I don't mix in so that the colors won't be mixed in also. And then I also have fan brush and then I have here a finer brush. This is what I use in adding details. You see that? It's very small, okay? Believe it or not, for all the colors on my flowers, I'm only using basic or primary colors. So the brand that I've been using ever since I was a student is Piotraco. So I'm going to show you what it looks like. And what I love about this is their color gels comes in tubes. So yeah, just like this. See that? I'm going to show you. This is what it looks like. Yeah. So on all my flowers, this is, this is what I use. And you can actually order from them in one box. So it's already available at Lazada. And what I love about the gel color, so I'm going to show you a painting here that I did. So it actually works like watercolor. So um, once you put it on a plate like so, when it dries, you just apply gin or vodka and then using your fine brush, this one, you can actually paint it away. So I'm gonna show you this one. So this is actually dry, but I dip this in uh, gin or vodka. So I'm gonna show you, I'm going to put, see that? The colors are activated again, even if it's already dry. So that's, really, that's what I really love about the Piotraco food color gel. And you know what? They also have this color powder which is very, very interesting to use. So I also use it for dusting my flowers at some time, but take note, it's not really made for dusting, okay? So I use it for uh, coloring my paste and then for coloring my buttercream also or my icing because it's very easy to use. But um, at times you can also use it to dust your flowers, but again, it's not really meant for dusting, okay? For dusting, what I use is rainbow dust. I just want to show you how strong the pigment is of, this is what it looks like, the Piatraco. So they also sell in boxes like this, okay? See that? Different colors, uh, basic colors. I'm gonna show you how strong the color is. So what I have here is color red. Okay, so I'll get some red and then you see my hands. You see that? You see how strong the color is? And you look at my hands. It's very red. And then I'm going to show you. I'll try to remove the color. I'll try to wipe it off. You see that? Even if you apply pressure, the color is very hard to remove. So imagine if you use this on your cakes. Okay, you see that? The pigment is very, very nice. Okay, you see that? Okay, so that's the Piotraco Food Color Powder, color red. And then um, for dusting, this is what I use. Can you see that? Okay, uh, this is rainbow dust. But you can also use sugar flare or crystal colors. And then uh, when I'm not dusting my flowers, I'm using an airbrush. So this is my airbrush. This is three years old. Can you see that? So this is the compressor and then this is the pen. I got this from Baker's Bazaar. So you can also use this one. It's really, really heavy duty. Okay, and then after that, um, I'm gonna show you other stuff that I use in flower making. Okay, and we are back. So uh, before we continue with other materials that I actually use, we'll be answering just a few more questions. Okay, we still have a few more. Okay, uh, this question is really, really nice. Uh, when did your love for flowers start? So for me, it started since when I was very very young and to give you a short background uh, when i was younger the money that i saved from my school allowance i usually buy plants from that and then i also buy botanical books so most of my close friends they thought i would pursue a career related to um what do you call that related to plants or botany but then i realized that yeah i love plants but I love flowers, but I wanted to do something else more. Okay, 
So, we'll answer more questions. Okay, why am I blooming? Okay, why are you blooming, chef? That's the question. For me, uh, if you're a happy person, it radiates. Because if you uh, let the negativity of the world sink in, it's going to affect you and the way how you um, communicate or react to people. So, for me, if you retain in you only the positive vibes, it radiates and of course, everything that comes close to you becomes happy and positive also. So, happiness is a choice. So, you always have a free choice to be happy and I suggest you choose that, okay? Okay, uh, this is also a very good question. So why don't you work abroad? Basically, the reason why I don't want to work abroad because I really love the Philippines, okay? So, I love to travel abroad to discover cultures and the different designs that they have and the different plants that they have. But I really love to stay here in the Philippines. The reason why is I go, if I go abroad, normally I'll be part of the brain drain, okay, when it comes to talent. So I always wanted to stay here and enhance the different capacities that Filipino people can provide. And I wanted to show the world what Filipino people and Filipino talent can really do, okay? So, we have some more questions. Okay. <clears throat> the questions are actually really funny. Okay, how to move on? Okay. Um, for me, this is not only restricted when it comes to relationship. For you, for me, uh, moving on is very broad. Okay, so if you want to move on on something, for me, my advice is keep yourself busy, okay? Because if you keep yourself busy, you'll for you will forget about what happened. And then if you kept yourself busy, let's say by studying something new, investing on new skills, finding a new hobby, you'll get to learn more and you will grow more as a person, okay? But like what I always said, uh, moving on is actually a process. It's not that easy, so I suggest that you start making yourself busy, okay? And then, um, don't forget about what really happened because it, it will actually help you in the near future. It will help you to be more strong. It will help you to grow more as a person, okay? So, never forget, but you have to let go of the negativity, okay? The negative energy because it's not nice. Okay, so you have... Some more questions here <laughs> okay really okay is this serious okay the question is really really funny <clears throat> okay the question is when will you be single okay why are you asking me if if when will i be single okay um with regards to that i'm really happy with my current relationship I just got into a relationship series uh, around two months ago and I'm really really happy with my partner so I don't think I'm going to be single okay I'm very happy with my um, but you know I'm not cutting any bridges we can be friends only friends okay okay another funny question are you friends with your exes yes I am in fact, actually, um, I'm still, I am still able to talk to some of my exes. Some, okay, because some people are actually disconnected already. So, I mean, not going, you know, somewhere else. But what happened is they blocked me, so I don't have access. But uh, for most of my exes, yes, I only had three. Why am I speaking like I had a lot? So, yeah, I'm still friends with them. And the good thing is, um, for you to be friends with your exes, basically, you need to have a good closure. Because at the end of the day, you don't want to have bad feelings or bad vibes with other people. Okay, so you need to build that mindset. Because it will actually help you to be a more happy person and be more blooming. Okay? So... Okay, uh, in a normal day, what do you do? Okay, um, when I'm not making cakes, when I'm not making flowers, basically what I do, I paint, 
as you see the painting on the back and then I have other paintings here on the studio I love to bake yeah but I'm not when I'm not baking uh, I paint I do gardening so if you'll see I have plants inside the kitchen there's a lot of plants on my house so when you go into my room it's like a jungle when you go into my office it's like a jungle so there's a lot of plants okay I really love plants and then I do work out every day I love to work out okay and then yeah that's basically what I do and of course uh, I always sketch so if you want me to make a video actually of how I paint or sketch on cakes please let me know I'll be happy to share that okay and then last question for this round we only have two remaining okay um the question is how to be you po how to be you po um basically for me my advice is be yourself okay because um what i learned in life is if you learn to embrace all your imperfections it will actually radiate and it will make you unique okay so you have to be true to yourself be yourself and eventually you'll find something where you're good at and once you explore that talent it will bring you places of course if it brings you to different places you always have to remember that you have to keep your feet on the ground you have to be very humble and you always need to have a heart that is pure and only intends to do something that is good and for the betterment of all okay it's not easy but if time comes that you've been thinking or you have bad thoughts about someone my advice is start praying within your mind it actually helps okay that's what i do most of the time okay so we will continue with the different tools that i use in flower making so this is very important this is like my sister or my best friend in making flowers uh, this is a foam pad okay it actually comes in two form the one that has holes okay and the one that is very plain so i love to use the one that has holes because it works as three different tools already so the holes when you're making flowers you can actually put wires here so the flowers will stand up straight and of course the holes also uh, some foam foam pads has different sizes of holes you can use it to make blossoms okay you can use it to make other flowers as well it's a pizza cutter so when you're making leaves that are very very long let's say for tulips or if you're cutting petals manually if you don't have a specific cutter yet you can use a pizza cutter so I highly suggest you invest on something that is metal and stainless. This is actually three years old already. See that? And it's still freaking awesome. Okay, so this is what I use. I also use uh, different materials such as sesame seeds. Okay, so this is what I use for making um, different flowers such as anemones. And then for my Cherokee roses, the center, this is what I use. And then uh, for, you've actually seen some of my leaves that are very shiny and some berries. What I use is Sugar Craft, this one. So this is a confectioner's glaze. There's a lot of different brands. What I use is Sugar Craft. Um, you can buy this at Bake at Al also. And then uh, I also have here, um, these are actually juice stirrers, okay? Or juice pins, okay, just plastic sticks okay so this is what i use uh, when i am mixing colors okay so so that you're not touching the colors directly because our hands has okay my hands has some red from Pietraco. no kidding aside our hands has natural oils that actually affects food okay even makeup or colors their shelf life so I suggest uh, don't touch the colors directly especially if you're using ones that are not on tube let's say uh, like chef master you need to use this one or if you don't have this one you can actually use a toothpick okay to help a lot also and then I also have a cornstarch puff okay so this is what it looks like a cornstarch puff normally it's from Wilton and then you can actually buy it at different stores but if you don't have the um, what do you call that? The cornstarch puff. You can actually use a DIY 
Okay, so this is basically a white cloth. And then I put cornstarch inside and then I wrap it. And then I actually tie it using a rubber band. So this actually works the same. See that? So when you dab it in, little cornstarch goes out. And then for the shortening, shortening is used when you're kneading. Because you need to knead the paste, especially if it came out straight from the fridge. Okay, you have to knead it so it won't dry out and to condition it. The brand that I'm using is Poratos, but you can also use Crisco. So this is what it looks like. Um, this is Poratos. I always use uh, Poratos or Crisco because it's very clear. It doesn't have any scent, okay? And it's very nice to work with for flowers. Oh, by the way, before I forget, um, I also use Ginar Vodka, especially when I'm using airbrush. Okay, so yeah, I don't drink this, okay? I use this for airbrush and for coloring my flowers or painting. The reason behind is if you use gin or vodka, what happens is it actually evaporates in the air and it dries out quickly. Yes, you can use water even if you're painting on cakes. Mm -hmm. The only difference is it's going to dry longer, okay? Normally, it takes about one whole day or 24 hours. Unless, unlike what I mean, unlike, if you use a uh, gin or vodka, it normally dries in a minute. Okay, so it's really important to use alcohol for your flowers. And then for dusting, I also use this one. This is a paint palette. So this is what I love to use when I'm dusting. If you don't have this, you can use an ordinary plate so it won't be messy when you're dusting, okay? And then we're down to some of our questions. Okay, okay um, how old are you? Can you guess? Can you guess how old am I? <laughs> okay, I'm actually 25 years old. I recently turned 25. Okay, and I actually think that I'm a bit old. But I'm happy that a lot of people are actually saying that I look like 18. Do I look like 18? Okay, um, I have here another question. So, what keeps you going? Going where? Where am I going? Okay, um, I think this actually translates to what inspires me or what keeps me going every day. Basically, uh, it's the people who believed in me since when I was starting and until now, including you guys. So, all of you keeps me going. Um, the flowers, colors. In terms of inspiration, I always love getting inspiration from plants and flowers. Believe it or not, I see patterns when it, when I look at leaves, okay? The under veinings, the colors. Um, I used to zoom in flower pictures of real flowers. And then um, in a matter of seconds, I get a new idea, a new fresh idea that I can translate into design or cakes, okay? I also have a lot of different containers. So small containers, big containers, you can also actually invest on that, like this one, similar to the one I used for the gelatin. So this is where I put my shortening so that I won't be damaging the entire shortening patch. I just get what I need. Okay, and then I also use um, a specific brush. Okay, And I highly suggest that you put sponges on your... Um, what do you call this? Paintbrush that you use for wet color or glue so that um, when you lay it flat on a table, it's going to be like so. You see that? So the tip that is actually wet is not touching the surface where you're working at, okay? So you won't be spreading colors or glue anywhere. So this is very important, okay? That's actually a tip. And then for my edible glue, what I use is Two tablespoon of warm water and then I add one four teaspoon of Tylose powder. Okay, so there you have it. I hope you learned a lot. The different tools that I use. Don't forget to check the description box below because I'm linking you to my different suppliers where I buy sugar, where where I buy raw ingredients, and then where I buy the specific tools, veiners, cutters, like that and also my other tools on where I buy them, so please check them out. 